Good evening and welcome to this Friday, September 16th, 2011 edition of the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Aaron Dykes, covering from Alex Jones. He'll be back next week. Our top story tonight concerns the announcement that the NFL will begin using TSA-style pat-downs just to enter sporting events. This is something we knew was coming because of Homeland Security announcements that they were going to enter shopping malls, sports stadiums, and the rest of it, as well as bus and train station terminals. But we take you now to a special report that Alex filed just this morning on this outrageous expansion of the TSA police state. Alex Jones here reporting for InfoWars Nightly News with this special report. Well, darker days have come to our republic. The United States, once a bastion and light of liberty worldwide, is now an example of tyranny and oppression not even seen in Soviet Russia or Nazi Germany. Not even the Nazi Germans set up checkpoints and grope people's genitals. Now the NFL, basically under unlawful orders by big sis Janet Napolitano, has ordered the NFL to grope all 16 plus million of their fans that go into the sports super centers every year. In fact, the teams have now announced today that starting this weekend, everyone will be groped. Now, before I get into this report, notice, first it's take your shoes off and take your belt off and take your jacket off. Then it's we're going to grope you on the outside of your pants. Then it's we're going inside your pants. Now we're going to put you in these microwave ovens that are killing the TSA workers as well. Now the TSA and Big Sis at the last Super Bowl are there helping run the security of the Super Bowl in Dallas. Now it's going to happen at every event. We're going to grope you from the ankles all the way up to your breast, all the way up to your neck. They say they're going to grab your wife's breast. They're going to take the diaper off of your baby. Uh, the same stuff that goes on in the airports. And people say, well, if you don't like it, don't fly. And then it's, well, if you don't like it, don't go to, to an NFL game. Here's the problem. It's always more, more, more 10 years after 9-11. TSA is announcing and has now shown up in, what, just three, four months ago in New Mexico, groping people at a prom. TSA has announced that they want to put their trained officers. So, so if you get knighted by the TSA, that they wave a magic wand, now you can violate people's rights. Police departments, state police, other federal police, and private security guards are now saying that they're going to have a right without a warrant to stick their hands down your pants. They're saying shopping malls. Uh, Janet Napolitano is at the Super Bowl and other games in your face as if you wouldn't be safe if she wasn't here taking all your rights. 9,000 locations like Walmart with telescreens saying don't trust your neighbor, only trust big sis and, and running PSAs where all the terrorists basically look like tea partiers. This is all happening. This is the authoritarian overthrow of America. It has nothing to do with terrorism. The government admits they put the underwear bomber on the plane on Christmas Day. That was staged on record. All of this stuff is garbage. And we're all the Lockheed number three in Al Qaeda he is hanging out secretly at the Pentagon. The State Department has now come out and said that they won't give up his records for his privacy. It's staged. They were giving Libya. Uh, over to al-Qaeda. They're giving al-Qaeda a seat at the UN. They're admitting they're engaged in genocide, exterminating blacks, but that's okay. Al-Qaeda gets given a country, but you, your wife, your children get to have private security grope them. And that's all that's happening here is our republics being overthrown. It's a federal power grab. What jurisdiction does big sis have to be in all these big football games? What jurisdiction to be in these public-private partnerships at Walmart saying, you know, don't trust anybody? Let's say terrorism was real. You've got a better chance of dying from being struck by lightning or bee stings. Look it up. Or being bit by a snake. But we don't have checkpoints. I'm out here in the woods. You know, do we have checkpoints right out here? Because I'll guarantee you there's copperheads. I'll guarantee you I'm here in Central Texas. I've killed rattlesnakes in these woods. I've killed copperheads. Out at the lake, I've killed water moccasins. Should there be TSA everywhere because 500 plus people die a year or more from poisonous snake bites more than terrorism? This idea that we're all guilty until proven innocent. This idea that government's got to be there treating you as if you're guilty up front and groping you. Think about it. Imagine growing up if you would have heard that in the Soviet Union, which by the way, they didn't do this, but imagine if they would have told you in the Soviet Union, 
they grope you and grab your wife's breast and grab your genitals to go to a football game. How did I know all this was coming? In my film, Martial Law, 911 Rise of the Police State, I have state and National Guard photos from their own websites where it showed them in 2003, 4, and 5 having military out groping small children at college football games in places like Alabama and searching little three-year-olds, little play purses. This is about indoctrinating our children and turning our country into an absolute nightmare system. And they know you need to fly for business or to see grandma who's dying of cancer. They know you want to go see the overpriced football game. And so they're saying, okay, we're going to beta test and train everybody that this is okay and acceptable in these areas and then roll it out on the streets. So that's my final point here. This is all premeditated. Governor Ridge, the head of Homeland Security, almost nine years ago, that's how I knew all this was coming on C-SPAN, said you're going to have to have Homeland Security approval to have a job. Everything you do is going to be tracked, face scanning, license plate reading. Homeland Security is going to have checkpoints all over the streets of America, shopping malls, you name it, a total takeover. Worse than any third world country, worse than North Korea. Absolute abject oppression, unspeakably un-American, ridiculously tyrannical and oppressive. So, we've got to draw the line here, okay? They're already pushing for TSA in malls and grocery stores. They already have purchased all these big trucks they say they're going to set up on the side of the highway and make you go through. They already have federally funded, quote, no refusal blood draws without warrants. I mean, imagine the Nazis taking blood at checkpoints. They're doing it. They know foreign banks have taken over. They know that you're going to try to take the country back. So they're trying to, in the name of security, sell this soft, slow, incremental martial law. At a point, it builds up to where it is a hardcore martial law, and we're now reaching that point. This is a PSYOP, plain and simple. It is so scary. Now, this is all being done so they can rob you blind. The country's bankrupt. Europe's imploding. They're announcing world government openly. They need to get this in place, and so that's why I'm here to tell you. Even if you don't go watch the overpriced football games like 16-plus million Americans, what they say, 16.5 million Americans go to these stupid things. They're now admitting that there'll be four or five hours to get in with the groping. Don't be part of this ritual of corruption. Boycott it, and even if you don't go to NFL games, talk about boycotting it. Write letters to the head of the NFL. Write letters to their sponsors, most importantly, and tell them, I'm not buying jerseys, I'm not watching football, I'm not doing any of this. I'm going to go to a city council meeting and talk about liberty and freedom, or I'm going to write my Congress people, or I'm going to call to talk radio. I'm going to get on the field of issues to save our republic and our society. This is why sports has become so sick, because they mix it full of all the propaganda, all the police state garbage to sell you this tyranny. And now they're going to use it to fully condition you and your children to accept tyranny. So we must boycott the National Football League because they are expanding this takeover into every facet of our lives, including highways where we don't have a choice. They're turning the entire country into a giant prison camp, a giant re-education center. So please join me. Start your own website, send your own emails, but create a huge buzz. We are boycotting the NFL until they tell Big Sis and Homeland Security to stop using them as a conditioning end cap to roll out and launch a total TSA occupation of America as the domestic police force and the internal passport. Boycott the NFL until they reverse this or America will be destroyed. This is a serious, hardcore, red dawn takeover of jackboots, and the NFL is deeply in bed with it. I will be boycotting the NFL, and I will be speaking out against it. Please spread the word, do your own YouTube videos on this, and let's continue to hammer this. We're going to be doing a lot more in the next few days and weeks. They picked the NFL because they know they can always sell the tickets and they, you're, they think you're dumb and you'll put up with anything to go be part of this uh, garbage and watch a bunch of crackheads basically uh, you know, run around on the field. Show them 
that your will hasn't been broken. Show them that you're not an idiot. Show them that you're not a moron. Show them that, that you understand what they're doing, and we can stop these people. All right, that's it. It's, uh, this is more rant than report. We're launching this boycott right now here on InfoWars Nightly News. Now spread the word on this, get it out to the media, and let these people know, and let these big mob boss owners of these teams that are deep in bed with the globalists know that you are not helping them destroy the spirit of America and basic human liberty. We're not even fighting to keep America free anymore. We're just fighting to not completely fall into a Soviet-style gulag. Again, I'm Alex Jones reporting for InfoWars.com. Now the rest is up to you. Wow, what a disgusting and shameful overreach of power. I really hope you take Alex's call to boycott seriously. In other news, Mayor Bloomberg has predicted riots in the streets if the economy doesn't create more jobs. This is, of course, in the first sense, just a shameful plug for Obama's job creation plan, which we know is a joke in the first place. I mean, his job council head is currently still employed at, at GE, that's Jeff Immelt, and he's committed absolutely to destroying the American economy and shipping jobs overseas. Uh, but what Bloomberg's doing here by, quote, predicting riots, is just getting ready to blame the right for what they already know is coming. Gerald Salente, who's a frequent guest on this show, predicted these riots back in November 2008. We take you to a clip of that right now. Basic trends, uh, 2009, starts accelerating uh, more and more layoffs, more uh, confidence lost. You talk about total implosion by 2012. What will it look like? Crime is going to be rampant. So Salente was obviously able to predict that there would be food riots and the rest of it because they're committed to destroying this economy. Everyone knows where it's headed. It's not even hard. We've been covering it for years as well. Also back in 2008, the IMF chief, uh, then not disgraced Dominique Strauss-Kahn, also predicted that if they didn't start creating policies that didn't only benefit the super elite, that there would be pressure, civil unrest, and the rest of it. We know that the UK and the Army War College have warned about the possibility of economic riots in the UK as well as in America. And we also have this report from 2007, based on the Ministry of Defense report, uh, which also predicted revolution, flash mobs, and brain chips, all based on middle class economic pressures. So this has been in the works for some time, and Bloomberg's just trying to score political points here. Also in the news, we have Ralph Nader, again, sounding the same alarm he's been beating for many years, that the U.S. has become a two-party dictatorship, that we have no real political discussion in these so-called elections, and basically identifying how staged everything is. Ralph Nader joins a host of other leading uh, sort of alternative left voices who also think Obama deserves to be challenged in the 2012 primary. That includes Kucinich, people like Michael Moore, people like Webster Tarpley, uh, Cynthia McKinney, and the so-called anti-war left. And why not? Obama completely lied about bringing the troops home, ending the wars. He's only expanded it more and more. And now today on Infowars.com, Kurt Nemo reports that a poll finds people prefer Hillary Clinton over Obama uh, for 2012. Uh, obviously, Hillary's not acceptable either, but Obama does deserve to be challenged and ask questions from his own base about why he didn't end those wars. Of course, that base is only moving towards people like Ron Paul, who has been a man of his word for many years. Now, in local news in Tucson, the city council has begun to kick out people who are uncivil or who make personal attacks during the commentary periods, and they're tying it directly into the shootings that happened back in January in Tucson uh, that killed several people and nearly fatally wounded the congresswoman. So it's no coincidence that it's happening in Tucson where they've already called to essentially restrict free speech, and now it's moving on to city council. Check out this clip of what happened. When the people of Tucson speak through a verdict after listening to testimony for three weeks, and they well, say thank, he's thank a liar and a scumbag, Hello. how do you guys get off hiring him? Uh, next speaker. You make your point, uh, but uh, get off the, uh, the, the personal attacks. And if, and if you can't do that, then just keep your bile at home. You think you're going to get away with it. You're angry because I called Miranda here. Oh, now you're now you're into uh, oh, personal attacks. Okay. Abs absolutely unfair. Uh, let's let's get to uh, 
He said he acted with an evil mind. Okay. They presented, were presented with clear very, very well. Evidence. I, I'm. Uh, can, this is that's from it the court for the case. call of the audience. Let's this go on to item from number. This is the court seven. case. Let's go on to item number Am seven. Well, what happened today is they simply have said today we don't want anybody saying anything negatively about a city employee or a city official in the performance of their duty. And we have the rule in place that says if you can't come down and conduct yourself in a in a civil fashion uh, without being offensive, then we're going to ask you to leave. And that's. We have another rule in place, and that's called the First Amendment. It really doesn't matter if you agree with this guy's commentary. He has every right to call them out. And so I guess they're trying to move towards those kind of Congress rules where you're upset about the fox being in the hen house, but you can't even identify who the foxes are in the room or call them out by names. Now, again, this mayor is one of 150 mayors who signed a pledge back after Jared Lee Loeffner shot so many people calling for Americans to choose the words carefully and to speak truthfully without accusing. Very bad precedent, and we hope that doesn't stand. And I would imagine we're probably going to try to get this gentleman on the show. Uh, whether or not you thought he was civil in this meeting, he, of course, as I stated, has a right to say what he said. In other news, the Libyan al-Qaeda gets a seat at the United Nations. That's after more than a month from people like Hillary Clinton pushing for the National Transitional Council to get the United Nations seat, which has been uh, de facto vacated ever since the siege against Gaddafi began. The fact that this is al-Qaeda, who's taken over in Libya, has been well known since at least March. We've covered the stories. Former Libyan al-Qaeda leader says there's more than a thousand jihadists among the rebels. This story from The Telegraph. Libya, the West, and al-Qaeda on the same side. Uh, we also have freelance jihadists join Libyan rebels. So from the NFL to shopping centers and more, Americans will be increasingly kept under a police state, patted down for regular behavior, but al-Qaeda will be given a seat at the already totally discredited United Nations, which willingly passed the resolution to allow the NATO airstrikes on Libya in the first place. And finally tonight, we want to cover the move to create an artificial volcano type effect through geoengineering the climate. This actually has very little to do with volcanoes, which, by the way, put off far more CO2 than man could even dream to put out. It has to do with the scheme to pump sulfur and, I guess, other particles into the atmosphere through a mile long or so glorified garden hose that's going to be suspended by this balloon and that's a plan that's been around since at least 2008. We have AP stories talking to White House science advisor John P. Holdren, the population extremist, uh, who's called for this kind of things, including uh, separate plans to spray uh, sulfur and aluminum particles into the atmosphere to create what they call albedos, artificial clouds to reflect sunlight. And then we have the Council on Foreign Relations reporting on geoengineering on a planetary scale and the geoengineering option. And this incorporates many of the leading scientists who all say this is a good plan, even though it's extremely dangerous. So when man has supposedly altered the atmosphere through carbon dioxide and man-made global warming, they're now going to further alter the atmosphere and inject even more artificial particles are they out of their minds? Do they not know that sun is the driver of life on this planet? And if they try to block it out, it's just going to lead to something like the Matrix movie, which predictively programmed a blocking out of the sun, a total darkening of the sky. That's really what they proposed here. It's outrageous. We should learn more about it, and we should oppose it. We're going to be back in just a moment after this break with more from the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Aaron Dykes. Stay tuned. It is a big idea, a new world order. In the near future, Earth is dominated by a powerful world government. It's known as the Bilderberg Group. Could their objective be world domination? For thousands of years, their dark order grew. Now, as they hail the birth of the New World Order, their great dream of exterminating 80% of humanity is at hand. For the first time in history, the elite's plan for world government is blown wide open. You 
will learn the secret that drives the entire New World Order agenda. Bilderberg is making great progress toward a world government, and only an educated, informed public can stop them in their tracks. Alex, it's Chalabi, eh? For the first time, all the pieces have been put together, the dots have been connected, and the picture is crystal clear. Earth's ruling elite believe they have discovered the fountain of youth. But before they can attain it, 80% of us must die. A psychopathic technocracy is establishing world government so there can be no escape from their plan. The New World Order is the Old World Order. I mean, it's just the names have changed, the appearances have changed. Most people have no idea. They're not after money. They have all the money they need. They're after power. That's their aphrodisiac. I was pulled out of the plane in Munich. They interrogated me four hours. Some shots were fired. I need you to move off the problem. Their great dream of exterminating 80% of humanity is at hand. Endgame. Blueprint for global enslavement. You have been warned. The Federal Reserve, of course, yesterday announced that they're going to continue, at least for the next two years, to have 0% interest rates for the megabanks, not for the general public. That, of course, will accelerate the devaluation of the dollar in the world's eyes. And so we saw a massive plunge in the dollar today uh, before the Federal Reserve went in and propped it up. The federal government is at an all-time historical low with credibility with the American people. Gibson Guitars has now been raided, and we've now learned it wasn't over illegal foreign wood. It was over, quote, labor practices, because under UN Agenda 21 international law, you can't import wood and then work the wood or make any changes to it. Fukushima is still melting down. Five of the six giant reactors have totally exploded and melted down. And in the last few weeks, they admit that Three days into Fukushima, happened on a Friday, by Monday, they knew that three of the reactors, later it was all five of the six, had exploded. I knew on that Monday morning when I watched the reactor ex explode that it was a complete and total meltdown and a meltdown explosion. And then I interviewed top nuclear physicists who'd been in Japan and who had gotten samples. Of course, Western governments all knew what the mushroom cloud meant. But it showed that fission had taken place, that a Chernobyl-type explosion, much bigger than Chernobyl, had taken place. That was Reactor 3 with uranium and super-deadly plutonium. And it turned out that they had 500,000 spent fuel rods, well, it was a total of 614,000, but, but on that particular uh, 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 reactor, the majority of them, 500-plus thousand, were stored on the roof and in holding tanks and were spewed into the air. Central Texas, the worst fires in recorded history have struck after a five-year drought uh, has brought us to basically, in many areas, desert-like uh, conditions. A lot of the grass is just dying in Austin and is now sand. Uh, well, um, FEMA has done what they've done in Arizona and so many other areas. They showed up two days into these fires that have destroyed over 150,000 uh, acres just in one area uh, alone, uh, well over uh, 1,200 homes, deaths. The farmers, the ranchers were getting together protecting their land. FEMA came in and said, no, you can't build fire berms. Firefighters from all over the state poured in. FEMA showed up just like in Katrina and said, no relief effort. Uh, we're going to come in in the next few days and command things, and all they're doing is blocking the operation. I've now confirmed with multiple firefighters now that this has happened, that they're even trying to go on people's property where farmers have successfully built fire uh, walls uh, with dirt and are telling them, nope, you get out of here. Wow. Ron Paul, last night, again, won the NBC debate poll, won all the other polls. He won more than 50% of all the votes against all the other candidates. And what did NBC do? 
NBC didn't report on him in any of their major stories, neither did MSNBC. They basically ignored the winner and engaged in another scam. They put on television that graph you're seeing. Uh, when the poll first started, he had 43% to Mitt Romney's 21. But you notice all the other graphs are proportional. 1.3 is proportional to 2.7. 2.9 is proportional to 4%. 7.8 is proportional to 16.4. 16.4 is proportional to 21.5 of Mitt Romney. But Ron Paul, with 21 plus points more, is looks like he's only barely winning. Then this morning, because of heat, they went ahead and reversed themselves, but still didn't extend it out as far as it should when Ron Paul uh, closed out the poll with 53 plus percent, more than half against all those other candidates. Big sis set to zap travelers with MRI style scans. And Homeland Security head came out and told Politico and others, don't worry, you're not gonna have to take your shoes off soon. We've got new scanners coming out. And then they detail that the scanners are MRI. And I went, wait a minute, the New York Times reported people dying from MRIs and getting cancer, and if they're not calibrated right, all your hair will fall out because there's so much radiation. So many powerful magnetic waves going into you. And so n n n uh, not only are they going to bake you with the naked body scanners or make you walk by those open x-ray scanning luggage, now they're going to try to make you fry your feet with an MRI. Do you have any idea what MRI type technology does to metal if it's inside you? I mean, this is, this is just unbelievable. But it's even more unbelievable that the TSA workers stand around inside uh, of these facilities basically being microwaved and baked. They're the ones that are really getting cooked. First off, not just in New York, but all over the country, we are seeing checkpoints being set up. And they tell us, oh, it's a special event. Uh, because 9-11 uh, is coming, we're going to have checkpoints on the highways, and we're going to search you without a warrant. There's no Fourth Amendment because of a special event. Just like under federal grants, they say, oh, we're going to have a no-refusal weekend where we take blood at checkpoints from you, violating your Fourth Amendment under federal grants. Now, they're announcing it's just 24-7, 365. So that's how they start it. Only sometimes is the Fourth Amendment suspended, because the tyrants say so. And only sometimes do we have checkpoints. You see, that's how it's working. And so they are running around saying bag searches, checkpoints in New York amid threat. And they're pulling over taxi drivers, trucks, citizens, searching people's person. Tens of thousands of people a year now in New York. They make you line up and frisk you. Just absolutely incredible. Worse than North Korea. Worse than third world countries I've been to in Central America. Okay, that was Alex with some of the headlines. Let's go now to some of the special reports. They're allowed to videotape you with their dash cams and other recording devices, yet they expect us not to be allowed to videotape them. What do you think about that? I don't think it's fair at all. Uh, first of all, I believe it's contrary to the First Amendment. If they're able to record us, then we should be able to record them. It's only fair. There needs to be checks and balances. I don't want, I don't trust them. I don't trust them. It's always us getting in trouble because they have the cameras on us. But when the camera's on them, it's a threat to them because then they know that they could get caught very easily doing something they're not supposed to. What do you feel about losing a lot of our civil liberties since 9-11? Uh, it sucks. You know, you have, you know, people that can invade your phone calls and text messages and emails. And so you really don't have any privacy. And that, that really scares me. You know, so I think 9-11 was sort of uh, the Trojan horse for all that sort of policy to come in. If you notice there's free speech zones. We can only free speech in certain areas now. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's almost like everything that we once had is slowly shrinking. Is it worth it to make us more safe to lose our liberties? No, certainly not. I mean, you know, 9-11 was, uh, was a terrible event, but in terms of... The things that have happened since then making us more safe, I'd say that's the other side of the coin. Do you think there needs to be a new investigation into September 11th? I don't think it would hurt. I don't know how much we would know about it or, um, again, maybe how unbiased it would be, but I think it always is something that is interesting to look at further. I think America should demand a new investigation. Definitely be interesting to see things that 
I'm sure the government didn't want the public knowing at the time. The only way to get to the bottom of it is to do more research. And we've got a couple clips here. The first one is ABC News from a year ago, in, in case you're a new viewer and doubting us, whitewashing it. U.S. military is concerned. They don't like helping grow opium, protecting it, helping ship it out. And so they've spoken out. So the government's response is just throw it in everybody's face and go, okay, we're helping grow the opium, we're helping ship it out. Uh, let's go ahead and move along. So here's that clip from ABC News. The Taliban finances much of its operations by selling opium, which is grown from poppies, which are right now being harvested. So here's the question. Why are American troops now helping Afghan farmers grow that opium? In western Kandahar, poppy farmers score, kill, harvest their crop. And the Americans do nothing to stop them. Oh, they give them the fertilizer. U.S. soldiers greet farmers. Can you show me which poppy field is yours? They commiserate with farmers. Because if it isn't part of our crew, we're burning it. I'm very sorry for his field. Don't sure. pay cut. And, uh, Shut it down. And that's why soldiers ignore and encourage the farmers. Yeah, if ignore the US and encourage. Crop, farmers would blame the that U.S. for their poverty and turn toward the Taliban. Oh. If we secure them having a good harvest, now they're going to get paid for all their hard work, and then we can deal with the trafficking afterwards. We can deal with the trafficking afterwards. The whole country's Taliban. It's a bunch of tribes. But they know Americans are dumb. It's like our media claims Al-Qaeda is based in Iran. Those are Shiites. They're arch enemies of the Saudi Arabian Wahhabist. But I don't know the soccer teams in Pakistan, do you? Just like we don't know who the players are over there. They just completely play us as idiots. But it got worse with Geraldo Rivera. You can watch the whole clip online. Just type in... Geraldo Rivera, U.S. government growing opium. They give them the fertilizer, security, and then load it on and fly it here. And we'll deal with the trafficking when your dumb kid uses it. We'll throw them in a private prison owned by big banks that launder the drug money. Let's play that clip. These troops have confiscated 10,000 pounds of opium before the profit reached the Taliban. Uh, and in a sense, uh, you're watching as uh, this opium is being grown. I know it, it grinds at your gut. Oh, yes, uh, grinds. How do you deal with it? What are you doing about it? Well, uh, frankly, this is a part of their culture. So uh, while it might grind in my gut, it, it's what they do. Uh, we, we provide them security, we're providing them resources, yes. and we're providing them alternatives. Oh. And the Marines are doing the good thing. Uh, Dave, Clayton, and Allison, back to you guys in New York. He just explains it better than we can ever read in any paper what a dilemma it is. With the oh. opium trade. And they make so much money off the opium per yard there. They make so much money compared to those yeah. other crops. This is the group so it thing. It sounds great in theory, and Geraldo says this predicament that these politicians have put these guys oh, in. Oh, predicament. Have to tell them, hey, make a lot less money than the heroin you could be making with right. the poppy. And, and they can't destroy it. Right. We're, we're Again, Pat Tillman wrote home about this. They had to kill him. Troops were calling me. We were covering it. That, yeah, we guard it. We give them the fertilizer. It's loaded on C-130, shipped to America. So the system said, look, we'll just throw it in your face. What do you think about paying higher utility bills because of the EPA's new regulations against power plants? You know, there may be some new regulations coming up against power plants at this point. But unfortunately, right now, I think that our, our citizens, uh, statewide and nationwide, basically overburdened, especially with, with today's economic uh, developments and situations that are going on. I think rate hikes should be at a minimal to at least try to alleviate some of the burden on our, our, our taxpayers and our citizens nationwide and statewide. I know a lot of people that are going to be not only shocked, but a little bit irritated about that as well. Sure. I mean, they're already, I mean, because it's such a hot summer. Exactly. You exactly. know, everybody's yes. bills is already out through the roof. You're already paying through the roof because the ACs are running nonstop. And then all of a sudden it's like, you know, on top of that and with a downturn economy, yeah, it it's, doesn't seem to jive that well. Of course, I don't want to pay higher utility bills. They're already extremely high right now as it is. Well, I don't want to pay more because um, because of the carbon dioxide thing. That doesn't seem right, especially if it's not even proven. Generally, I, I prefer regulations that, that deter pollution um, and paying a little bit more for that than an unregulated environment. It all has to be regulated some way, right? Well, it's going to mess our environment up. I understand the tax on carbon footprints, but I mean, who's, who's, you know, getting a new Lexus, you know what I mean? Time Magazine reports, despite more than a dozen international conventions banning slavery in the past 150 years, there are more slaves today than at any point in human history. More than 500 mostly small-scale trafficking syndicates 
Nigerian, Chinese, Indian, and Russian, among others, collude and corrupt police officials to enslave local victims. Obama has pledged to make the fight to abolish modern-day slavery a top foreign policy priority. But the U.S. currently spends more in a single day fighting drug trafficking than it does in an entire year fighting human trafficking. According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, after drug dealing, human trafficking, both sex trafficking and trafficking for forced labor, is tied with the illegal arms industry as the second largest criminal industry in the world today. And it is the fastest growing. There are an estimated 600,000 to 800,000 children, women and men trafficked across international borders annually. Approximately 80% of human trafficking victims are women and girls, and up to 50% are minors. The total market value of illicit human trafficking is estimated to be in the excess of $32 billion. Sex trafficking is an engine of the global AIDS epidemic. And of course, we can detach ourselves from these mind-numbing statistics, simply turn on our TVs and escape to an illusion of celebrity lifestyles selling us their mythical realities as we all eat from the vicarious trough of slop we are fed by our masters. Our masters, you ask? In 2009, Foreign Policy magazine ran an article entitled The Next Big Thing, Neo-Medievalism, arguing that the power of nations is declining and being replaced by corporations, wealthy individuals, the sovereign wealth funds of monarchs, and city-state regions. At what point will we wake up sharing the same hardships as these slaves in third world countries? John Baum, InfoWars Nightly News. Do you feel comfortable with the fact that Facebook is data mining all your personal and private information, including, you know, your friends' and family's activities? I mean, I can't say that that's comfortable, but I think anything that you put up on the Internet is up for public scrutiny. I'm not comfortable with that at all. Um, although I, I, know, I know they're doing it. Um, and I wonder exactly what they're doing with all the information. The government agencies realize that it's a good way to, you know, pick up on things that they don't like or especially illicit activities. You should, you know, keep your settings on private and you should be careful with what you post on there. It's easier to monitor people on Facebook than it is to tap people's phones, I think, to a certain degree. Anything you put up on the public sphere, I think, is essentially public information. Just with the Internet in general, we are getting more used to, like, our business being out there and just getting used to, I guess, our privacy diminishing a little bit. I'm just not going to be very informative on Facebook anymore. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, there's no way to describe what a con artist Al Gore is. I mean, I never even used profanity on air in 16 years, and I, I have to use it for him. This person, I mean, I would not buy anything from them. If they came to my door, I would call the police. I mean, Al Gore is a swollen bag of scrofulous pus. Uh, Al Gore is an anti-American globalist who's called for a post-industrial America because he has investments with Maury Strong in China. When they shut down our industries, that increases their insider industries over there. And now he claims he controls reality. Al Gore now is running, as we speak, a 24-hour propaganda piece saying that it's a hoax that we don't believe in man-made global warming, and that anyone who criticizes him works for oil companies, when we document it is the major oil companies with Ken Lay, with Al Gore on record, that's even in the New York Times, who came up with this to shut down coal that is their competition. Now, is coal perfect? Certainly not. Do they have a lobby fighting Al Gore? Some of them, yeah. But he mixes all of this together. So I want to play this clip, but this is a guy who wants you to pay more for less. This is a guy who's a globalist and hates this country. And this is a guy who has been so full of crap through the years. Do I need to list the examples? Invented the internet. The list goes, NAFTA and GATT are a great idea. It's a good deal, Larry, on Larry King Live. We'll go ahead and go to this disgusting clip. I probably can't watch much of it. I'm a mudslide. 
A forest can become kindling. Oh. Across the globe, cataclysmic Pay Al Gore events money. are occurring with such regularity that it's being called a Pay new Pay Al Gore money and there won't be forest fires. Uh, and there's something else. I say it was a trendy list. The truth about climate change. The truth. I have the truth. Big coal are spending big I money the to spread doubt about climate change. They've been able to do so quietly. But now, now buddy, you are the hoax. 14th. The world will They've been able to do so quietly of with us trying to shut them down attention on the full for like 24 hours of scale scale and I'm and sorry. Climate crisis. 24 to hours of Al Gore sitting on the toilet crapping on us. Look, I can't take any more. Shut it off. Shut it off. Shut it off. Look, the curtain's been pulled aside, little man. We know who you are. You're running a scam. You're trying to seize control of the entire society. If you're trying to fly to Canada, for example, and you have a guitar that's 50 years old, uh, they could stop you from traveling, they could take your guitar, and you can even be fined. That's, that sounds like a, a pretty typical of the trend of uh, loosely worded and selectively enforced laws that's been happening for a while. You see them popping up more and more. That doesn't shock me. Just another crackdown. Just when's it going to stop? You know, it's like, what else are they going to take? They're raiding people for the wood old wood i mean if this precedent goes through where does it stop if it's from another country it's been exported then there's there's going to be these laws that say that if i try to leave the country with my with my baby that they're going to take it from me or find me that's not fair man you know i'm not even a musician but you know in being in that community that just makes me feel totally violated and vulnerable it kind of reminds me of um the way like monsanto tries to restrict home gardens and say they're organic farms by doing that they're trying to take more of our civil liberties and they're, they're basically they're just basically trying to, to strip all, away our, all our rights and show us their cards. It doesn't seem to be a due process sort of situation in the slightest, and it seems to be much more far-reaching. If you get on a plane and you want to travel out the country, there's a chance that if you have a guitar with you, that's, let's say it's an older guitar, that you could be restricted, you could be fined, or they could even uh, take your guitar from you. What do you think about that? I say Big Brother's wreaking havoc on the free world every step of the way. Okay, those are just some of the special reports you get only as a subscriber to PrisonPlanet.tv. This is the InfoWars Nightly News, and the whole program is just getting started. Coming after the break, we're going to recap some of the important guests we've had on in just the past two weeks. Stay with us. You don't need me to tell you that humanity is in a deep crisis. Everyone can feel it. We know a tectonic struggle is now taking place between the forces of freedom and those who love darkness, bondage, and enslavement. Yes, my friends, evil is rising. But take heart, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Recently, New World Order operative Hillary Clinton admitted they're losing the info war. We are in an information war, and we are losing that war. The globalists are scared. They've overreached. The future of the info war is in your hands. Join PrisonPlanet.tv. Download the thousands of special video reports, ebooks, and more, and get them out to everyone you know. Continue to spread the word about the broadcast on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and every other globalist propaganda platform. We are going to use their system against them. The info war now goes into high gear. We're back on the InfoWars Nightly News. Again, I'm Aaron Dykes sitting in for Alex. He'll be back next week. Right now, we're going to show you some of the highlights of the most important guests Alex has interviewed just over the past two weeks here on the InfoWars Nightly News. Uh, Henry, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me here. Uh, first off, uh, just give viewers out there the basics of what's happened with this uh, SWAT team raid. Well, last uh, Wednesday, we had, uh, you know, well over a couple of dozen armed uh, agents with weapons and, in some cases, bulletproof vests and uh, SWAT attire uh, come into our facilities, uh, evacuate the facilities, shut down the factories, uh, hustle our people out on the streets and in the parking lots. Uh, pour through the factories and uh, grab uh, pallet loads of uh, raw material, wood, uh, grab paperwork, 
uh, grab uh, computer hard drives, uh, image computer hard drives, and generally shut the business down uh, and indicate that we could not build uh, any guitars or touch any guitars that had Indian rosewood or ebony and every guitar we touched uh, w would be considered a, a federal crime. Wow. Now, uh, you are a non-union shop, correct? Yes. And you, from what I've read, uh, your operation is mainly a Republican uh, group of uh, donors. And uh, your big competitors, I was reading in the news, they are big Obama uh, supporters. And you are the only company that's been raided so far. Um, this is the second time in the last uh, couple of years. Uh, do you think there's something political going on here? Well, the fact that we're, you know, we're doing the same thing other people are doing and only we are being targeted uh, leads me to believe that there are some ulterior, possibly political uh, motives. Uh, the second thing is, uh, it's an extraordinarily violent response. Uh, you know, coming in with weapons, shutting our business down, uh, interrogating our employees. It's it's sort of over the top, and again, uh, indicates to me that there's some kind of ulterior political motive there. Describe for folks what the city of London within the city uh, is. Right, absolutely. The city of London has been the global center for the global hedge fund community because they're very lax uh, in their regulatory environment uh, for banks and hedge funds. And as a result, they attract the hedge funds. They also attract many of these oligarchs that are fleeing their countries. For example, the Icelandic bankers who stole billions, they took up residency in London. And uh, this, they, give him, they give them safe harbor. Uh, as a result, in, in a perverse way, the real estate in London is out of reach for the average person because of the price appreciation due to the inclusion now and the uh, arrival of all these oligarchs from uh, Iceland or from Russia, different territories around the world where they have been able to totally co-opt the system, uh, confiscate wealth. But London is definitely the, 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 the center of the global arbitrage and the global money laundering business as well. And as a result, it attracts uh, all sorts of um, these kleptocrats and oligarchs. And um, the city of London, which is their quote unquote Wall Street, it's a principality within London and uh, it fits amongst these other, ter there's a couple of other territories in the world. Um, I believe Washington DC is one of them and so is the Vatican. These are three centers of, of uh, it's its own um, sovereign, if you will and they have their own government, and they kind of communicate with each other. It's part of um, the ability of the elite to communicate with each other completely outside of any sovereign that is reportable to the public. It's a private sovereignty. And um, obviously with the queen and the monarchy also nearby, uh, there's a lot of communication there as well. There's a lot of wealth that's being controlled. Remember Gordon Brown last year talked about the shadow banking system. And this is a $14 trillion dollar a banking facility that's completely outside of the uh, normal channels of the banking system, that's completely unregulated, it's completely non-visible, non-transparent, and this is where many of the, the stock deals go down uh, and where a lot of the inside information is capitalized on before becoming public because it's done completely out of, the, out of view uh, of the public. Can Ron Paul win? Yeah, Ron Paul can win. And in fact, the fear that the media is exhibiting by first trying to um, put the blackout on him, then of course demonizing him when they're not blacking him out, shows that they are very afraid. He's talking about issues that are resonating with the American people as never before, issues that threaten the establishment, everything from the Pentagon to the CIA to the Federal Reserve to the bankocracy and all the rest of the power elite in Washington. Uh, they're being threatened, they're worried, and they wouldn't be paying, you know, they wouldn't be saying anything about Ron Paul, Rush Limbaugh, Hannity, Bill O'Reilly, all the rest of these people would not be denouncing him if he didn't threaten the uh, apparatus that they're part of. So he can win. And as you say, he's moving up in the polls. He's moving up slowly, but he's moving up organically. He's getting more and more people, young people especially, but people of all ages in all different states, not only in this country, I might add, but around the world, 
people are, are uh, Ron Paulians in every country. So this is an international movement. Uh, it bodes so well for the American future as we face, of course, terrible economic and other kinds of troubles. But this is, this is the bright spot in America today is the Ron Paul movement. With more on this incredible scandal that threatens to bring down the Obama crime operation is Larry Pratt, the executive director of Gun Owners of America, the only no compromise pro Second Amendment organization here in the United States. Larry Pratt, thank you so much for joining us. It's a real pleasure to be with you, and I agree with your assessment. Uh, it made the scandal, the crime spree that the government has been on, it could possibly bring the president down before the next election. But my guess is that there is just so much investigating that's being done that Congressman Issa, who's the point of the spear on this, is not going to have things in a position uh, for that. But I do believe it will affect the election. And it will almost certainly guarantee that the president be a one term president. He has refused to fire the people responsible for running guns into Mexico, some 2000 guns resulting being used in crimes that have taken the lives of about 200 people. Only 600 of the guns have been recovered. So there's a lot more crime coming down the road. And this, uh, I think once the Republican nominee gets a hold of this, if they don't do it beforehand, it's going to be lethal. The mayor of London, like Bozo the Clown, unveiling uh, the, uh, this new memorial and then saying it's our job to have a controlled demolition of these conspiracy theories that 10 years on continue to grow and we've got all these BBC hit pieces US hit pieces the system is scared to death I mean their favorite tool of staging terror attacks and using it to crack down on the public they are hopping mad Paul that it's not working they're mad and they're desperate, which is why this week sees a complete onslaught of new 9-11 hit pieces against 9-11 Truth by the likes of BBC, National Geographic and the History Channel, which I find it pretty rich, pretty ironic that the History Channel, every time I turn it on, is talking with, you know, lending credence and credibility to UFOs and alien invasions, giving people platform to spread that. Topic, and Bigfoot. Bigfoot. Chubacabras. Yeah, everything that's rife with misinformation, and yet anything to do with 9-11, it's always a hit piece against 9-11 truth. Well, because the global why... banksters don't care if you're obsessed with leprechauns all day, but they are concerned if you know that Building 7 was blown up and they announced it on TV beforehand, or the U.S. troops were already massed in Afghanistan and in and around for the invasion, or hijackers trained at U.S. bases. Amy Alcon, thank you so much for joining us on InfoWars Nightly News. Thank you for having me. So break down what happened to you and uh, now what it's basically uh, come to. Well, I went through, I was at LAX. I was going to an evolutionary psychology conference in Binghamton, New York. And um, I usually don't buzz at the metal detectors. But um, at United, they were searching every person getting on a plane. Not searching, they were body scanning or groping every person who gets on a plane. And... Um, I am very passionate about our Constitution. I really feel grateful to have all these rights. Nobody in anywhere else in the world has the level of rights we have. And then also, I mean, I don't want to be touched in my most private places by a stranger. So I started to get a little teary-eyed. And then I thought, I thought about it, and I thought, these people, these people who are earning a living violating our Fourth Amendment rights do not deserve our quiet compliance. Now, you know, I can sort of hold back my tears and everything and be a tough cookie, but I thought they don't deserve it, so I started sobbing, and I sobbed as this woman searched me, this TSA woman. Now, it is my opinion, I can't prove it, but that she did this to be punitive. What she did, like what happened to Miss USA, she took the side of her hand and she stuck it in my vagina four times. They go up one leg and then up the other leg. She did it four times. Each time she jammed it up there. I was so shocked, and I was already sobbing and had intended to sob, but I didn't understand that a crime would be committed there. I thought, you know, the government allows the I considered a crime what they do already. They're groping your breasts. There's no probable cause. There was no sign that I would be meeting with Al-Qaeda, you know, in Binghamton, New York. I was interviewing some anthropologists. And Undoubtedly, 
Undoubtedly, this is a giant power grab. It's about setting the precedent. They're now announcing they're gonna be on the streets of America doing this. So you get up to the point, you're crying, uh, you're telling her you don't like it. Uh, well, I, what happened, I was just sobbing, I and mean, it was so shocking to me to not only have what is the standard be done to me, but have this woman go really far. And someone on my blog this morning said, oh, you're a drama queen, a woman like you makes this up. Well. I was just in New Orleans. I also got groped. I also cried. And what I wonder is why doesn't everyone else cry as their constitutional rights are totally violated? But in that case, I didn't scream, you rape me, because she did the standard thing where they go up your leg. She did not go into my vagina, which is just obscene and horrible. So I screamed, you rape me. You sexually violated me. I called my boyfriend. I was terribly upset. And um, then I blogged about it when I got home. And I blogged this woman's name. Because I don't think if you do this, you're wearing a name tag as an adversary of the government, that you get to be scot-free about it, that we need to name the people who are committing crimes against us. And I think anybody who works for the government searching you without probable cause, by the way, is a criminal and should be named. It's not just somebody who goes much further like this woman did, as I believe, in a punitive way. That, that was my, that's my belief, that she intended to punish me for not going quietly and being one of the we the sheeple, like so many people who go pleasantly, compliantly, and politely. Sheriff, great to have you here with us. Hey, thanks a lot, Alex. It's always good to be with you. Do you ever feel like that you're living in some weird alternate dimension because arresting Amish for selling you know, tomatoes and milk, uh, kids being arrested for lemonade stands, Gibson Guitar told uh, to leave the uh, country, TSA going in the pants of people now, folks being uh, charged and facing life in prison for videotaping and taping police in public. I mean, uh, is our government trying to go beyond North Korea? Do they think they're God? Uh, yeah, it's, it's basically come to that. And, and you failed to mention the other one in Florida. Uh, the police are telling uh, the news media they can no longer have scanners. So this all fits into the picture that you're drawing. Uh, for your audience right now, that it's it's so out of control. It's everything to protect the government, and yet nothing to protect the Bill of Rights or the people. And this should be very alarming to everyone in America, not just Alex Jones listeners, but everyone in America should be getting on board, listening to your information, because this is now affecting the mainstream of America. Well, let's talk about the solar flares and now segueing from the, the fires of Central Texas, which were quite devastating. You know, I'm into personal preparedness as you are and most of your listeners are. But when those fires hit, I realized I had a huge gap in my preparedness plan. I did not have a fire respirator and fire gear. So I immediately made sure that I had that covered. And then so I actually ordered products and got them in. And now I can actually fight fires to some degree that are in my front yard if I have to. But then I also began to ask questions, where else do I have gaps in personal preparedness? What are the real risks to safety, to growing food, to uh, uh, surviving on, on our planet? Now you hinted at this. One of the things that the US government does just maliciously and, and insidiously is they, they make people think that things that aren't dangerous are very, very dangerous, like so-called terrorism. And then at the same time, they ignore the things that are really dangerous and make them seem like they're not dangerous at all, like Fukushima, for example, or now what, we're, what is theoretically a big risk of a, I should say a big risk in our lifetime, not today, not tomorrow, but over a human lifetime, it's a very real risk that a solar flare could knock out the power grid. And it could knock it out for years in some places, and it could disconnect power from the nuclear facilities that are trying to run coolant pumps to keep their fuel rods from going into a meltdown status. Well, that's right, Mike. We are such a dependent society now, and technology is great, but it's a double-edged sword. It took 80 years or more to build our modern system. And when a little tornado comes through or a hurricane, you can have places out for three, four months, and it's a national effort to get it back up. But if you have widespread uh, systems knocked out, then it causes a cascading where you're literally knocked back to the Stone Age. And you're right. Yes. They estimate, because they've been studying the sun for more than 300 years uh, in, in a modern scientific fashion, that these solar flares are a 100-year event. The problem is it appears we're entering one of those in the next decade. So you're right. It's a once-in-a-lifetime deal, but we're here.
Okay, well, that's it for this September 16th edition of the InfoWars Nightly News. But, of course, the program itself is only getting started. And remember, we're not corporate-sponsored, and we're not government bailout money-sponsored. We're supported only by our subscribers and those who wish to donate to us. So if that's you, please help us expand and reach even more people with this powerful new platform. Alex will be back next week, but for tonight, I'm Aaron Dyke, signing off.